Hi, this is Jason Watt. Welcome back to the BCC video series. Uh, this is going to be the second in our video series around capital gains or sorry, around charitable contributions. Uh, specifically here, we're going to be look at cap, looking at capital gains and charitable contributions. Our third video will deal with donations by a corporation. So we know from the previous video that you get a a smaller credit on your first $200 of donation and a larger credit on your donations over $200. Because we're gonna be dealing with larger dollar amounts here, I'm going to ignore that first $200. We're really just going to deal here with donations over $200. I know that my math is gonna be a tiny bit off because of it, um, but honestly, if I were showing this to a client, I'm not preparing their taxes for them. I'm just estimating the, the tax outcome. And this is how I would present it. The first $200 is confusing when you get into very large donations. So when we donate capital property in particular, we get some special treatments around it. We're going to look at first off a donation of bare land. And that donation of bare land uh, has a fair market value of $300,000 and an ACB of $100,000. Okay, so as we would expect, we're going to have a capital gain here at $200,000. We would apply a 50% inclusion rate. We get to a taxable capital gain of $100,000, and that would just be taxed as income for that taxpayer. Now, that's the capital gain portion. I know a lot of times people say, well, it's not really fair. You shouldn't have to pay capital gain when you donate property. We'll see later on that sometimes you don't. However, in this case, you do for bare land, you do, unless that land is ecological land, ecologically sensitive land, which requires you to jump through um, some hoops, okay? So we'd have then the charitable donation here. It's just like we saw in the previous video. I'm gonna use a Manitoba taxpayer here. Uh, so that's a $300,000 donation. And this uh, taxpayer, if they're, uh, in that uh, in any tax bracket other than the 33% tax bracket, they're going to have $139,200 of tax savings. If they happen to make more than about $220,000 in 2022, that's gonna put them at the 33% federal tax bracket. And in Manitoba, they would have a 50.4% combined tax savings, uh, just over half then $151,200 of tax savings as a result. Now. We also saw previously that there's that 75% limit. So when we look at your net income, we have to take that net income and apply that 75% to it. So let's say this person makes another $100,000 and then they have $200,000 of net income, says so 100,000 of other income plus 100 from this disposition, the taxable capital gain, that's $200,000 times 75% we would expect there to be a $150,000 limit on donations that can be claimed. That's not quite true because when we donate capital property, then there's a further increase to that 75% limit. We're gonna add 25% of the taxable capital gain here. Instead of being limited to $150,000, this taxpayer is gonna be limited to 150,000 plus 100,000, that's the taxable capital gain times 25%. They won't be able to claim more than $175,000 of charitable contributions this year. They might still make that full $300,000 contribution. They could, although I don't think it'd be wise, you'd probably wanna do a little better tax planning than this. They could use the full 175 this year and wipe out really more than enough of their tax payable and then carry forward the remainder for up to a further five years. I would suggest that good tax planning here is gonna see you probably claiming about 100 or $110,000 of that donation. Okay, and then carrying forward the rest. Now, a lot of you will know that when you donate publicly traded securities, so this could be a mutual fund, this could be a portfolio of securities that we fall under, again, a different set of rules here. So this is where I donate publicly traded securities. Again, could be stocks, uh, could be bonds, exchange traded funds, mutual funds, um, segregated funds, although segregated funds are a little tougher to donate, but it, it uh, could be done. So we're gonna have then 
fair market value at 300,000, ACB at 100,000. Once again, here, proceeds of 300, ACB at 100. Our capital gain is $200,000. But we, even though we have a $200,000 capital gain, the inclusion rate here is a 0% inclusion rate. That gives us a taxable gain then of zero rather than the $100,000 we saw when we donated bare land. So that's a significant advantage. And you do see a lot of tax planning around this idea, this idea of donating appreciated securities. Those of you who listen to my podcast, uh, you might've caught Marshall McAllister in season four around episode eight or nine, talking about doing this exact thing, sort of a cherry picking securities from client portfolios to donate and uh, really squeeze the maximum tax benefit out of those donations. Now, this also applies to donations of ecological land. And once again, we have that 75% limit. However, this time the taxpayer does not get an increase based on 25% of the taxable capital gain because the taxable capital gain here is uh, zero, okay? So they're gonna be stuck really claiming $75,000 this year and then carrying forward potentially $225,000 for future year's use. Again, some tax planning has to go into that. It might not be from a tax perspective, best to donate that much in this year. However, if that's what the taxpayer wants to do, well, great, go ahead, make that donation. Uh, maybe you can make a big RIF withdrawal, for example, to create income to give you a place to use that charitable donation tax credit. Okay, in the uh, next video in our series, we're going to look at the donations of, uh, sorry, donations by corporations, which presents a, a little bit of a neat planning opportunity. Thanks very much and enjoy your continued studies.